this is the Soyan MN N5. Probably one of the smallest pieces I've ever tested on this channel. It's very hard not to see the inspiration behind its design. Look too close and you might swear it's a Mac Mini. But it's not. Let's unbox it and see what's inside. The box is simple, clean, very budget Apple and the moment you open it, you're greeted with that little hello card. I mean, come on, they're not even pretending at this point, but it's charming and it sets the tone. The mini PC sits inside with this bright red ribbon around it, almost like it wants you to think you're unwrapping a gift. Underneath, you get the power adapter and HDMI cable and a VES amount with screws, basically everything you need to get up and run in. It's compact, neatly presented and the whole unboxing experience is surprisingly premium considering the price brackets. Right, this thing is tiny, we're talking a footprint of 88 by 88 millimeters, only 4 millimeters tall and weighed about 192 grams. That's lighter than me Google Pixel phone. The design, well, it's clearly borrowing cues from Silicon Valley. Two USB-C ports at the front, a power button and soft LED indicator. Clean, symmetrical, very Apple-ish. Flip it around and the illusion breaks, because here it's all business. Two HDMI ports, a full-size display port, three USB-A ports running at proper USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds, dual LAN, a 3.5mm audio jack and a DC input. For a box this size, the port selection is crazy good. One thing to keep in mind, the USB-C ports don't output video, they handle power and data only, so if you plug in a portable USB-C monitor, it will power up, then go straight to sleep because there's no video signal. That's normal, it's just not a DisplayPort alt mode port. But the triple display setup still works perfectly fine. HDMI, HDMI and DisplayPort. All in 4K. And yes, you can run all three at once. Just understand the CPU will definitely start to feel pressure if you push all those pixels at the same time. Wi-Fi performance is solid with about 16 meters of range through walls and Bluetooth works well with speakers and keyboards. I paired a small speaker with no issues. Just expect a tiny bit of latency on movies of a Bluetooth, typical for BT4, but nothing noticeable. During Windows 11 Pro setup, you'll need either a wired mouse and keyboard or a 2.4 gig wireless set with USB dongle. Once setup is complete, you can switch to Bluetooth and ditch the wires. And a quick note here, I bought the UK version and mine came with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. This seems to be the case for most European versions as well. The US Amazon listing, however, ships with Ubuntu Linux instead. Both operating systems work perfectly fine on this mini PC, but just so you know, all my testing in this review is done on Windows 11 Pro, so double check which one you're ordering. Open it is pretty much easy, four screws and the bottom plate comes off. Inside you immediately see the limitation, the RAM. The 12 gig LPDDR5 is soldered to board. Task Manager pretends there are four slots, but no, that's just four chips, three gigs each. No upgrades possible. For casual users, 12 gigs is perfectly fine for people who keep 50 Chrome tabs, edit photos, stream music, run virtual machines and play a game simultaneously, this is not your machine. The SSD is replaceable though. The included drive is a 256 gigs M2 2242 NVMe SSD. Do not try to install a full length 2280 drive, it simply won't fit. The SSD performance sits around 500 megabytes per second read and write, very SATA-like. It's fine for daily use and you can swap it for a larger 2242 NVMe up to 2TB if you need more space. The PC runs on Intel N150, a 13th gen twin leg chip with 4 cores, 4 threads, boost up to 3.6 GHz and a tiny 6 watt TDP. In day-to-day -day use, the power draw barely registers, around 3 watts at idle and roughly 12 watts sustained under the worst synthetic torture tests. It will spike to around 20 watts for a second or two, but then the system remembers it's a mini PC the size of a biscuit and calms down. The fan follows the same attitude, 28 decibels at idle, 34 decibels on the max load. In other words, you won't hear it. 
Thermals are surprisingly grown up. The thermal camera showed the outer vents hitting around 65 Celsius during benchmarks and the CPU stayed well within safe limits. Intel rates this silicon up to 105 Celsius junction, but realistically you want it under 85 Celsius for long sweaty workloads. And that's exactly where the MNN5 holds it. The tiny cooler is doing everything it physically can and honestly it's doing it well. Benchmarks land exactly where the N50 shoot. Geekbench 6 scores sit at 1105 single and 2648 multi. GPU around 4133 in OpenCL and Sidebench R23 hits 371 single and 1389 multi. Nothing that will make Reddit scream insane performance, but exactly the numbers you need to know the machine won't fall apart opening Chrome. And that's the real story here. Despite the modest scores, it handles actual work without fuss. Chrome with 20 tabs, half autoplay nonsense, stay smooth. Office apps respond instantly. 4K YouTube is clean. Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, etc, etc, all stream perfectly. And if you want to poke deeper, there's a nice surprise in the bias. You can raise the iGPU frequency. Stock sits at 1000 MHz. Bumping it to around 1200 MHz gives a small but noticeable bump in the user interface fluidity and the video playback. Just remember, this cooler is tiny not magical. Push it too far and physics will have the final word. All of this combined makes the MN N5 a generally comfortable office and daily use machine and it sets the stage nicely for the next section because once you've seen how cleanly it handles work, the obvious question is what happens when you stop working and start gaming or emulating? No surprises here, this is not a gaming rig, but it's absolutely fine for light or retro gaming. Stardew Valley and 2K runs beautifully, smooth 30fps, very playable. Roblox at 2K on medium settings, my son tested it for a couple of hours, smooth 30-60fps, depending on the map. GameCube emulation via Dolphin, perfect. Mario Kart, Simpsons hit and run, Need for Speed, etc, etc, all smooth and fully playable. Ok, I pushed further with a PS2 emulation using PCSX2. With some basic tweaks, you can hit 25 to 30 FPS at 2K in games like San Andreas or Vice City. They're completely playable even on the keyboard if you don't have a double shock controller. This is exactly the level of gaming performance mini PC buyers at this price point expect, and honestly, it meets or slightly exceeds it. Talking of the price, it comes at around $199 on Amazon and I got the links in the video description if you'd like to check it out. So what's the verdict? I would give the MN N5 an 8.5 out of 10. This ultra compact mini PC surprises with how much it can do for its size. Performance sits in classic N150 territory. Quiet, cool, efficient and reliable for daily tasks. The design is clever. Triple display output, dual LAN, whisper quiet cooling and solid build quality all $499 US making it a very reasonable buy for what it is. The main limitation is the soldier 12 gig ram if you need more memory this isn't the pc for you and if you expected a gaming rig temper your expectations this is built for productivity media and light emulation not high-end gaming where it fits best in living room streaming box secondary pc for work school or meetings and a retro emulation or lightweight computing setups at this price it's a smart practical option for anyone wanting a tiny capable pc without breaking a bank Agree, disagree, let me know in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I know you want to. Family Pop TV.